Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to try and explain how we can build a widget like this using Bubble. It's not about the calculator. Okay. It's about how this entire website, our main website is built using Webflow. And this little button is in Bubble and I can click the button and it ex expands into a full screen pop-up full widget experience. So this is something we've spent quite a bit of time figuring out. We've got a detailed guide on our website already, uh, but I thought I'd record a video as well as to how this whole entire experience, this iframe widget, the key part, the hard part, it's not making an iframe. An iframe is very easy to make. The hard part is how to make this full screen pop-up experience in it. Where are the scenarios where you could potentially use it? Uh, something like a chat bubble on the bottom right, or something which uh, is like a review widget, which expands into a whole different experience or even a calculator experience, whatever, uh, not calculator, but maybe a step-by-step -step onboarding that you want to just embed into a particular place. But yeah, so it can get a bit complicated. There is a little bit of code involved. There is a bit of web technology involved. So if you ever get stuck, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you out. I run a bubble.io agency. Uh, we build uh, startup SaaS MVPs for clients all day, every day. And uh, yeah, let's dive right in. Okay, step one in your Bubble app, you have to install the toolkit plugin. I've already installed it in mine. Key thing, key step, you have to enable various settings in the Bubble app itself. So you have to go to your settings tab in your general tab. You have to enable allow all iframes. Okay. And you have to tick this do not set cookies on new visitors by default and expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements as well. Okay. After this, our iframe itself, this mini section, let me show the element, all of, all of this, it's a single page inside the bubble app. Okay. So we can create that. I've just called it my iframe. It will be a strange looking page. It's a widget page. It's not a standard portal or dashboard or anything. After you build the page there, whatever layout and settings, and you can go through this easily, how to, uh, the whole thing was built. I just want to hone in on a key area. So we are, yeah, we're not using, like you would think this is a pop-up. It's actually not a pop-up. Okay. This is a group. Okay, it looks like a pop-up, but this is a group with a background. The whole background is grayscale, and this is an another group which has the background white, which makes it look like a pop-up. So it's not the pop-up element in an actual sense that you have. If you open the page on Bubble, it'll be looking like this, which is like, okay, what just happened here? It's weird looking because this is actually not a pop-up. It looks like a pop-up, but you have to design a group instead. Uh, we're, we're just gonna give it the look and feel of a pop-up. Now, after designing that and adding whatever workflow, we just used the calculator example. Let me hone in on the JavaScript settings. Okay. So now for this experience to work, okay. In fact, let me try and embed this code into an iframe HTML test. And I'll show you what a regular iframe looks like because without that, it will be hard for you guys to understand. Okay, let's try and embed this. Okay, so this is also an iframe pop-up, okay? So if I click it, see, look this squished, everything's inside, everything. Because in iframes, you're, you're not allowed to expand yourself, okay? The inner, think of it like a parent and a child relationship. The iframe is a child, the main website is the parent. So in our example, the main website, askutech.com, iframe test, that's Webflow, that's the parent, and the iframe, that's a child, okay? Now, due to security privileges and very good reasons, a child is not allowed, allowed to fiddle with the parent, okay? So for this to work, it's only possible that you have access to both sides, okay? And what do we need to provide on the other side? So it, it, because the child itself, it can't expand itself. So the child needs to tell the parent, can you please allow me to expand now? And then when you want to close, now I want to shrink down. So that's what's happening here. When I click this button, I tell the parent, I want to expand now and the parent allows me to expand. Okay. And then when I click this cross button, I tell the parent, now you can shrink me back. Okay. So if you take a look at the raw code itself, uh, this can get technical. So if you get stuck, just get in touch when we'll create whatever widget project that you have in mind. Let me try explaining. So yeah, 
take a look at this whole element now this entire page is now bubble okay everything's bubble okay I, I i can't seem to see this border but yeah this entire page as a whole is now bubble even this background it's all bubble powered and if i close the widget okay all the other sections that's not all now web web flow stuff only this part is bubble okay so this shrink you know, this expanding and shrinking that's the key part why i wanted to make a video because i don't think it's conveyed to a full extent in the guide it's hard to convey this in the text so what do we do? We have code on both sides. This is the default behavior of iframes that it will not allow. So we have to place a piece of code in the parent here, which will allow the expansion to happen. So let me try and show you that code as well and try and walk through it. So that's the actual embed code and the parent code is this one. Okay. All of this is already in the guide and you can download it. So don't worry about it. Just understand the concept first. So the key web tech that we're using is called a post message. Okay. Window dot post message. And take a look at Firefox Mozilla's like documentation about window dot post message. It's a method to safely enable cross origin communication between window objects. It's a bit technical. But yeah, between a page and a pop-up that is spawn, between a page and an iframe embedded with it. That's the, that's the more human uh, normal speak. That's the technical speak. But yeah, between a page and an iframe embedded with it, with it. So the iframe can send a post message to the parent, but the parent has to listen to the message. So by default, a parent is not listening. Okay, just for security reasons, the parent is not listening. So what we need to do on the parent, we need to configure, okay, window, add event listener, message, you will get a message and it will be of a particular type, open pop-up, then do this, close pop-up, do this. And all we're doing in the open pop-up, what we're doing is we're just basically expanding the whole iframe, making it full 100% width and height and uh, adding a background to it, the background that we saw, sorry adding that background expand full width and add background okay so that's all we're doing in webflow and when we close pop-up we just shrink it back down to your original size and uh, yeah leave all the other properties in there so this is the parent listener side okay now we need on bubble side to actually send the message okay so there's two sides to post message one is the side that will listen the other side is the one that's sending the message okay so in bubble in the workflow We've got run JavaScript. This is why we need the toolbox plugin. And we have to send open, like to the endpoint, open pop-up, the post message itself. And we also have to, so there's, I'll get to the why we pass the source URL back and forth in a bit. But just first understand that we are sending a message. So when the button A is clicked, when open calculator is clicked, send a message to the parent. I can't step by step this because Webflow is then taking over, code is taking over, and then it is going to just start doing it. I, in fact, yeah, probably, yeah, that's fine. So open, communicated. Now on this one, there's a different workflow. That's where it looks a bit funny on like, it's, it's, uh, you can't test it in bubble or step by step it. I can close again, run JavaScript. We're sending the message close pop-up. Okay. So on here, we send it, that close pop-up comes here into this. It get, checks the switch statement, the case, and then it just, uh, in fact, we added, we added some console logging as well. And uh, yeah, so the console logs should be visible here. What is it? Uh, console logs. Yeah, entered case, open pop-up, close pop-up, open pop-up, close pop-up. So super useful for very uh, lots of widgets, but yeah, the key thing to understand, and you can get the further detail from here on how to step-by-step -step replicate the whole thing as well and download the code as well. But now one last part that I wanted to mention is the source URL. So when we embed the, let me just close this, close this, close this. So when we load the iframe dynamically, okay, we don't just say, oh, here's the iframe, that's it, okay? We pass the URL in bubble, okay? Website source URL, uh, in the URL itself. Oh, let me just try and inspect, show where this is a bit hard to explain actually. Let me close this 
and uh, nope, not this, this here. Okay. Okay. And I think I'm gonna try and explain it using here as well. So you could, in theory, look at this iframe, regular iframe. Okay. I can just pass the regular bubble URL and I'll be like, yeah, that works. Okay. Why not just use it? This is the URL. It kind of looks and behaves like a standard iframe. I click open, I see this, I close, I see this. Well, it looks very funky, doesn't it? But the fact of the matter is post messages don't work from a child to the parent unless both know the URL of each other. There was some insight around it. I'll, if I try and explain, I'll fumble the tech part. So I'm gonna try and not explain. <laughs> but they, it was linked with the origin policy and there was a bit of technical depth about why and how. But you need to pass the URL of the parent page. The iframe needs to know the parent page. And that's what allows post messages to go through. Otherwise they are just not allowed. So we have to dynamically, what all this, this little script, let me just try and format this a bit. It's not that complicated if you space it out. So what's the, what this script is doing on the Webflow side is just, what is the page URL? The page URL is this one. That's all it is. There's nothing complicated about this one. Then after this document dot write, it's injecting an iframe into the DOM directly, manually. And it's also, the this URL is what we have on bubble side. And this particular URL, that's the website source URL, we read on bubble end, and plus URL plus width equal to. That's just creating the whole string. So it's creating this entire string dynamically, and then injecting it in the DOM. On bubble side, on page load, we keep this get website, we, we, we need to use this, okay? We need to pass, when we send a post message out, we need to send the parent URL as well. We can't just send it and just expect it to work. So yeah, target origin, there was an extra parameter we needed to pass, and this was for some safety reason about it. Security concerns, yeah, do not add any event listener or yada yada, yeah. but. Coming back to our widget example. So let me just see, I think I covered the hard parts and the rest is easy to cover in the guide here. There's various things like showing and hiding the button, but that's covered in the guide easily. Uh, by show hiding, I mean this button, it hides because we want the space to expand the whole pop-up and when you click cross, it shows up again. But those are small, normal bubble things. The key, the hard parts, okay, just to come try and summarize the, the tricky parts here. One, keep in mind, there's a parent website, Webflow, WordPress, whatever, Framer. There's a child, that's Bubble, okay. We want the child to expand and take over the entire page for whatever scenario, if it's a chat widget or if it's this uh, Bubble. It doesn't have to be this grayscale, okay. It can be completely translucent, it is, but it will take over, okay. I can't click outside it. Okay, at least not in this particular implementation. Would it be possible? Probably is possible. We don't need to take over the whole page. Okay, in our chat bubble, we can only take over parts of the page. That would be a change in score. That would be a change in this particular code itself. At the moment, the code's written to take over 100% everything. If it's a chat bubble example, you're just gonna have to modify this and the positioning to be bottom right of 100 pixel width, 400 pixel height, that's gonna become your chat. And I'll just plug in, this was actually, we learned a lot from Matteo Superbuild, there was a guy, yeah, him. He actually had a course on one of this, transition to zero code and this one, yeah. I may have just, explain too much, but this was a way more detailed step-by-step -step course that this was more chat widget, not full screen. So that's the thing that we had to change and adapt towards. It was just like the chat widget part, but we had uh, a few other things to it, but yeah, heavily inspired from him. So shout out to him back to our original parent, child bubble, both sides need to communicate in code. The communication is handled using post message as the method. And uh, there is a bit of code in the parent. 
a bit of run javascript on the child and make sure you pass the website source url for security not bypassing security both sides you need to control for allowing the messages to go back and forth securely and if you yeah if you're stuck just contact us and uh, more than happy to help you out we build lots and lots and lots of different types of saas mvp startups uh, widgets and what not for our uh, clients all day every day and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching thanks bye